Hello everyone, welcome to the 14th edition of the Lichter Film Fest uh, Film Festival. It's in Frankfurt am Main, Frankfurt International. You probably know the airport out in the world and some of you will have been here. This year it's from April 27th to May 9th on demand. So you can watch all the films on demand, not just this one we are gonna talk about. Uh, today we are with uh, Jean-Carl Boucher, from Montreal, Quebec, uh, Quebec, the French uh, provinces in Canada. And we are talking about the film with the English title, Flashwood. Um, yeah. Hello, Jacques. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah, uh, it is uh, quite interesting to have a French Canadian film here. And we will talk about this uh, specific uh, cinema region a bit later. Uh, but I want to begin with you, with your career. It's your first feature film as a director. You did a short film before, but most important, you are quite an experienced actor. And if I count right, you started even as a child or a young grown up uh, with 14, you did your first film. And uh, many films we can uh, see in uh, the databases uh, internationally. Uh, and some of those films uh, seem to be quite similar to your own film now because uh, there is a trilogy uh, starting with 1981, 87 and 91. Uh, you're playing the main character and the alter ego, alter ego of the director. Maybe you tell us a little bit about how uh, this experience as an actor fueled you being uh, turning to be a director now. And of course, uh, the work with the actors. Yes, uh, well, uh, as you said, I, I started uh, my career uh, pretty young with the... Uh, uh, serial commercials <laughs> even and stuff like that but quickly uh, it evolved in more serious um, characters and parts and uh, I, I've been lucky to have met uh, really great directors and collaborators and actors um, when I was really young and I st stuck to those people so we had we, we've have all evolved pretty much in the same projects along the way uh, with my fellow actors that became my best friends in life and uh, as you said uh, the, the the movies where I play the alter ego of the director he's also one of my great friends in life right now so we're all uh, hanging out together um, uh, it's been like 15 years that I've been in this um, industry and in, in Quebec uh, cinema or television uh, with the same people so it's really fun to evolve together so as a director um, well I, 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 I'm sort of an actor by uh, <laughs> by mistake because when I was a kid I was more fascinated by directors than actors uh, I was really really obsessed with um, how, how, how to make films more than play in films so um, as a child, you can't start directing at 12 years old. So I, I've been a, in films like that, but I've always been learning. And my, my, my filmmaking school was on sets and asking directors, uh, what, how does this work? And how does this, how can we make films and stuff like that? So I think I've, in a way, had a really good, good, uh, uh, a lot of good lessons and teachings by, uh, experienced filmmakers and that made me made it possible for me to make a first feature film um, but it wasn't made in a in a very conventional way we did it um, on a seven year span so <laughs> whenever anyone was avail available we uh, we always went back to this project so it was like uh, between acting um, we just uh, met with friends and uh, this project evolved in that way Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, interesting. You can see that uh, the characters in your film are growing up uh, and uh, that it's uh, for a long while. And if we don't uh, look uh, so closely to that movie, we uh, could even mistake it for being a documentary or for mm -hmm. being something like uh, this, this hybrid uh, type of films like Richard Linklater uh, did uh, some years ago. Uh, so over uh, seven years, of course, um, the, the most of the actors, uh, I'm, I was not absolutely sure how professional they are, because there is a touch of reality and uh, yeah. naturalism of real life in your film. So are all the, the actors, the main characters, uh, are they professional or what are they doing? 
Yeah, what are they doing? Um, that's that. Well, it's really nice of you to say that because that was the uh, the goal with this film is that, as I, I said, I've evolved with these this group of fellow actors uh, and actresses uh, along the way, and uh, we've played in many things that we didn't collaborate on the screenwriting or on the ideas. So at some point, I just wanted to use their talents in a way to create characters with them but my goal was to film them and and what I told them at every time we were shooting on Flashwood I said use your experience to just make it as real as possible and I want to I want it to to be like a documentary at some point but they're all professional actors and um uh the, the we've been what like at that time when we started making the movie I was showing them films where there was a lot of non-professional actors and I thought there was some sort of nice quality, obviously when, well, it, it, it's, it just looks so real when it's sometimes it works when it works. And I wanted to create that sort of feeling with them. And uh, it was an exercise at, at first for them because uh, we normally don't do that kind of project. And uh, so to know their, their characters with, was the main thing. And after that, it was just to, go with the flow and there was a lot of improv improvisation in the film and uh, mm. it was it was really fun to go there because we didn't we never went there as actors before and i was there to sort of lead the way and mm -hmm. it was fun did it change your um, attitude to, to the actors that you are an actor yourself did you treat them in a different way is it easier or even more complicated uh, to be an, a director with an acting experience That's a really good question. Uh, at first, I, I was a bit scared. I thought maybe I, I would have to negotiate a bit more because uh, because I, being an actor as well. But I, I was surprised at how how much uh, con uh, is the word confidence uh, trust those <laughs> my, my my cast had in me because they were like, oh, he's an actor. He's going to tell us exactly what's wrong and what's right, and. Um, that was a really fun experience to, to, to be able to be the captain <laughs> for a few days in, uh, in a seven year span with my friends. So it was, uh, it, it went so well. We never, I think it was for most of the, the actors, what they tell me is that they, they never had a better experience on, on a set. So I was like surprised by that. But when I think about it, it was, it was so free and so creative and it was like, one of those times where we could just uh, practice our craft and try to get to something new uh, and newer than what we were, were doing before. So mm -hmm. it was. How, how is it for you? Because you are still uh, since uh, or up to now in the acting uh, business as well. Uh, will you totally switch sides and become a director? Um, as I said, is it's my first love, and it's the it's the way I've been introduced to to cinema is by <clears throat> by the filmmakers and by the people who make the film. So obviously, it's something that I have always wanted, and uh, with this film, it's some some sort of transition towards that. And I love acting. I love acting, but I I, I think I prefer uh, directing because. Uh, There's something that's you're always solicited on, on a set, and it's I sort of need that. And acting, maybe you wait a bit too much. <laughs> and there's there's something for me that's sort of incomplete creatively. I I, I have to take the project and and sort of um, be in all the all the processes and the music and the post production and everything. I love all of that. So. It's something you can't touch at all if you're just no. acting. So no, it's much more personal part of work, of course. But um, the way, uh, as we said before, the way of uh, doing this film is quite different to the usual. So um, would you prefer as well uh, as an actor, but for sure in, in the future director's work uh, to work in the same way, improvisation, less uh, scripted, maybe not scripted at all, Uh, would you prefer this uh, style of, of making a film? It's the most of the films I prefer have that sort of quality there uh, where you it's very naturalistic and realistic and uh, 
of course I love that, but I think with, with Flashwood, it was the, the only way we, we could make it was by doing it that way. And it's some sort of an extreme in that realm. It's sort of the extreme. So I would maybe uh, go a bit, more scripted at some point and to really tell a, a, a more of a conventional story but with those same aspects sometimes that would be there obviously yeah. because uh, being an actor i just have too much fun letting the actors live and letting the actors take on the scene and just never stop if they don't want to stop so that's that that's the fun for me behind being behind the monitor is to know what where we're going and just be surprised by mm -hmm. the, the performances so, mm -hmm. so there, there will be some of those aspects clearly mm -hmm. how much uh, material did you shoot uh, was it very hard for you to to get through all that uh, in the edi edi editing room well um in the film we separate uh, the years it's like uh, there's a five years later and one year after us and that's the real time we shot those um i, I was honest with the audience <laughs> so when, when it, there's a a, a, a yeah. skip time it's the real time so i had five years to look at the first part of what the material we had and one year to look at the other one the other part and uh, five years was a uh, was so long that at some point I had a really short version, a way too long version. So uh, I tried many things and it was fun to, 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 to see how many films <laughs> we've made. So to choose which one was, yes, it, it was hard, but we, uh, I had a lot of input from, from many people and, and the actors because the actors wanted to participate in the, mm -hmm. they wanted to see what they, they did and, It was fun to have that conversation and to choose uh, what we could uh, put at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and how did you uh, choose or develop uh, the story? Because it's uh, um, it's a coming of age story. It has a tone which uh, one could call bittersweet. Uh, sometimes it's it's very nice, romantic, nostalgic, but sometimes it's quite tough and not so funny. So um, how did you choose this balance between those two sides and in general, the, the general thing you wanted to tell? How personal, for instance, is uh, the story you're telling? It's about friendship and it's... Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, the name of the film is is the place where it takes place. And, and uh, I realized in our group that we have we had like most of us, the, the, the same background. We came from little towns that looked a bit like Flashwood in the film. So being actors, we moved to the city pretty quickly. So we, we sort of ha had those conversations on what could we have become if we had stayed there in, this, uh, in these small towns where the, 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 the destiny is quite narrow for uh, young people and ambition sort of is, is sort of stopped at some point uh, and you have to yourself uh, get out of there at some point that's the feeling of of being trapped at some point so that's the thing I wanted to tell with those people and I we all related to that subject so of being trapped in the in some sort of ghost town where um, you're young you want you desire everything and you can't seem to grasp anything because of the, the 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 lack of possibilities and that that was what I, what I wanted to 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 show the these young people evolve in in a some sort of a prison at some point that seems nice because there's nice houses and everyone looks happy but we don't know if people are happy because they're, 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 they're maybe they're stuck in this narrow uh, life mm -hmm. So it was that feeling that I wanted to show. Mm -hmm. How how would you describe uh, what uh, influenced you as a filmmaker the most? Uh, of course, there is a very broad, surprisingly broad for us Europeans film scene in Quebec, especially and in Canada in general. 
And uh, I sometimes wonder because uh, compared to American, North American, US films, uh, the, for the Canadian films and specifically the Quebecois films seem to be quite European. It's not just the French language, it's as well the approach to reality. Uh, on the other side, uh, one could say that uh, your film, like others, is a variation of the suburbia uh, stuff, even sometimes uh, in, in, uh, of, of many other independent films, even sometimes the mumblecore uh, wave, which, which uh, was happening in the US in the last 10 years. Uh, so uh, where do you where would you relate yourself to uh, where where do you think are kind of brothers and sisters in taste uh, in filmmaking or don't you don't you care at all don't you look uh, left and right oh I, I i care a lot because i think that all filmmakers are are um uh, in french the world is amalgam <laughs> um uh, a combination of all yeah. the references that we have and that we there's so Mel melted of, together kind of melted exactly. together it would be yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I i remember watching the old rich Siddle movies mm -hmm. uh that were quite rough and i i like the roughness of those films and the sort of presentationary you know that you you feel the filmmaker but not necessarily in the camera movement and that was super interesting for me and uh the mumblecore uh, and mixed melted with the mumblecore uh, approach also that you feel the filmmaker, but there's something of of a freedom. I don't know. You you there's a different way with the camera that I that I really love in those two visions, and I I, I thought it was perfect for for this place and this setting to 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 just let the people live and be alive and. There, there's a documentary approach in the Ulrich Shadel films that I love, but you still feel his presence. So that was the, the, the objective and what uh, I really like about the, his cinema. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, do you, or is the, the Quebecois cinema in, in any way specifically related and close to the French cinema? Does the language matter? Yes, it does, uh, of course. Uh, maybe say that even more than the American uh, uh, side, you, you know, Sundance festivals. That, that's there, There's so many great films over there. But in Quebec, it's a bit longer before people sort of grasp those those films. They, 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 they know a bit more about European film, French films. Uh, it, it comes quicker to us. So that's why I think we 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 have them in reference a bit more quickly and um, in an easier way because of the language, of course. Uh, there's like a connection that's there uh, undeniably. So, <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 was, I was born in Saskatchewan. That's an English part of, uh, of uh, Canada, an English, more English province. So as a young uh, kid, I, I watched everything in English. So I've, I've kept track of films that are American or in any other language. Um, so that's why I have uh, many other influences. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I understand it right that uh, as a director, you did not go to a film school. Or did you did you go no. to film school to learn the craft? No, I, I would have went, mm -hmm. I think, if I didn't have that the 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 path that I that I took with the the acting career, but everyone knows all the directors I've worked with. They know that I I'm there to learn. So I do the acting job as a job, but I'm secretly there there to to uh, take the knowledge <laughs> of those uh, of those great directors and creators. So um, I mm -hmm. think that's the best school is to see how it's made and yeah. To be like uh, the first observer of, of what it is it's more mm -hmm. it's more of a practical way to learn but mm -hmm. if you watch a bunch of films and you get the chance to be on a set the, the you, you melt all that and yeah and and where did you learn or uh, from whom did you learn the most uh with the first first director i've worked with that's called francis leclerc uh, 
he's the first one to uh, have casted me in a film. And uh, I was so young and so passionate about us, about cinema. And he, he, uh, he saw in me uh, himself when he was a young, uh, young kid. So he, he took me under his arm, like his uh, wing. And he, uh, he's always been my mentor. And obviously uh, the director who I play is alter ego in three films. We've yeah. been, on technically on a set for so many days of shooting and he I've learned definitely uh, a lot with him I see um what will be uh, let's talk about uh, the future uh, what will be the future of your film of Flashwood uh, I am not aware whether there's a chance of coming out in Germany Uh, but uh, now audience can watch it at Lichter, but uh, later will it be played maybe in a streaming service uh, for us to watch? Is it, did it come out in Canada already? It came out, but there was obviously uh, this very <laughs> big thing. Uh, yeah. with What was the name again? COVID? Yeah, what's the name of it? <laughs> I haven't heard that much about it. Uh, yeah, it, it was really bizarre because uh we were supposed to come out at some point and then everything happened and then we rescheduled the film. So it sort of didn't get lost in, in, the, in translation, but almost. So uh, we're counting on uh, festivals like you, great festivals like, uh, like you to, to, to have some sort of life uh, internationally in the um, on, on demand or how do you call it? Like, um, Yeah, it's on demand or yeah. in festivals. So um, that would be a way to for, for people to see it. But in Quebec, um, we had like a month uh, in total where people could could go see it. So uh, we're 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 uh, adapting like everyone. Uh, at, at least a month. It was supposed to come come out in 2020. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's but, a hard year for cinema, but it's still. At least it's a month uh, because uh, in some countries in Europe, uh, the filmmakers would be very happy to have a month uh, for distribution. In Germany last summer, at least it were three months where you could do it. But uh, oh, okay. yeah, we had one month and then they closed everything. So it was quite sad. And there was films that came out and they were just there for like three, two or three days. And that's a, that's that's a real tragedy, I think, because it costs so much money to create a hype and and you see the people that want to go see the film that's that's so sad and they just can't so mm -hmm. but you know we have to stay safe and, and everything but for cinema it was a really hard uh, hard year it is how was how is the covid uh, situation now in canada uh it's it's very uh wavy i would mm -hmm. say uh, the government uh, handles it in a very um very good way i think and uh i think we're we're seeing the the light at the end of the tunnel uh but it was it was a very <laughs> uh it was a roller coaster i would say yeah yeah like yeah. everywhere in the world but we we felt it pretty pretty hard here yeah, yeah there, there are differences in uh, between the countries uh, so what is uh, for you your personal situation will you uh, is there a chance to do a next film as a director are you planning to do already yes um i think as i said i, I did the extreme uh, improvisational more impressionistic film now i'm working on uh, with a, an author that uh, wrote a, a really great novel uh, here in Quebec. Um, it's, I don't like the word conventional, but it's a more um, straightforward story. Um, and people like the novel and uh, I've been adapting that novel with the author. So that would be my next project. And, and it, it's fun to try something completely different and to have material that is uh, that is already there and I that I have to respect in a way and I want to respect the material so that's an, a different approach but um obviously I'll have that little uh, mumble core feeling if I can if I can introduce it in in the, in if if I can put a bit of that in the story I would be very happy yeah fine thank you we would be happy too and we are looking forward to see your next film for now We can see your first one as a director, Flashwood, uh, still, uh, I think, until 9th of May 
on demand at the Lichter Film Fest. And I don't know there uh, for sure, as well, wise people internationally who know how to use a VPN and can watch it as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, so thank you very much. Uh, stay safe and healthy and uh, stay a director. So see you <laughs> another time at a festival. I hope in presence. Thank you so much, thank you so much for having my movie and uh, you too stay safe. We thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.